Hi there. This is the second episode of the Virto 2.0 tutorial series. Uh, today I'm going to cover environment mapping, which is a very cool CG technique. Um, started in the, probably like the late 90s. Uh, one of the most notorious uses of it was in the movie Terminator 2, the liquid metal Terminator. It's just a very cool looking effect and uh, I'm going to show you guys how to painlessly accomplish this rendering technique uh, for your 3D scenes uh, for Virto Studio. So real quick I'm going to go into kind of like a quick, uh, very quick overview of how reflections work so you guys can understand how this technique is, is done. Um, basically in the real world we typically um, model 3D shading based off of a light source and a viewer which is represented on that screen as, as a light icon and an eye with the eye representing the camera position or the viewer. And typically the way it works is when you have a shiny or very reflective surface, what you will do is you will have a perfect bounce of the, the light coming in, bouncing off the surface and then reflecting off to the, the eye position of the viewer. Um, another way to think about this uh, from the position of the viewer is they are looking at the surface in a certain direction and then they see the reflection um, towards the light when they actually look at the surface at a certain point. So where environment mapping comes in is in the real world, in shiny surfaces typically reflect off of other objects in a more complex scene. So instead of reflecting just the light, you might have something like, you know, the rest of the scene. And typically this is achieved in more realistic rendering situations uh, through ray tracing, which means every single light bounce is, is traced towards other objects in the scene. Uh, this is also sometimes called global illumination. And while this is very realistic, it's not um, feasible for real-time rendering for 3D game engines and games and such because simulating those kind of light bounces are just, is, would just be way too slow. So where environment mapping comes in is you take the environment or from the position of the surface that you want to be shiny, you render the scene into a texture. So you actually capture the environment into texture pixels and then store those pixels in what's called an environment map. And then when you shade the surface, you use this map to um, look up the environment for any given color, for any given reflection. Now, these pictures are in 2D, so it might not explain 110% why environments map, environment maps look the way they are, but I'll explain that just in a sec. So this is the way a typical uh, what's called cube map environment map looks, which is what Virto Studio uses. There are, it's basically a cube which represents an environment unrolled or flattened out to its six faces. So there are six textures and each one represents the face of a cube. And the way this works is you can pretend that the surface is inside of this cube and when you're inside of a cube you can look all around you in all possible directions and in any given direction you'll see a color on the cube and that's the way the environment map is, is used to, to simulate the reflections. You're inside the cube and you're looking around it or a box. So that's essentially how environment maps look. Uh, now that we're done with the, um, the introduction I'll actually show you guys how to, how to use uh, environment maps and your scenes on the iPad. Okay, so I have my uh, blank scene document open and uh, I'm going to go ahead and create a couple just real quick objects here. So I'm going to add in a sphere, move that over there. I'm going to add in a torus, move that over there. And uh, real quickly, I'm going to leave the sphere in the center. What we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and add uh, environment mapping to this object. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to tap it, go to the material button, Go to a sphere um, material group, go to shader, pick the reflective environment mapping shader to pull off reflective environment mapping, tap the cube map, and then we're going to pick one of the stock cube maps that come with the app, and we're just going to pick one of these, and just like that, we've created environment mapped reflections on the sphere, which look pretty awesome. Um, so that's basically how to turn it on. Um, now those environment maps that come with the app are preset so that you don't have to mess around too much when you want to quickly um, just use an environment map. However, I've also included in this document 
a um, my own cube map that I got from the internet. So let me show you how to how to go ahead and set one of your own custom cube maps, which are independently set in the six spaces, like I mentioned before. So I'm going to go to this torus, just like before. I'm going to go to reflective environment mapping, and I'm going to pick cube map. But this time, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pick my own six spaces. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the textures that I've imported into the texture library here, and I just happen to put these in the right order. So there's positive x, negative x, positive y, negative y, positive z, and negative z. And there I have it. I have uh, my own custom environment map that I imported in um, for this torus, which is pretty cool. So now we have an example of a far more complicated scene where environment mapping using a static image really wouldn't help us too much here because, I mean, there's almost no direct access to the sky. I mean, it's all just polygons in, in my scene. So what I'm going to do here is show off a feature called the cube map renderer and I'm going to go ahead and just add one of those to my scene. And what I'm going to go ahead and do is we're, we're going to use this as a special camera which is going to render the scene into a cube map dynamically for us. So the camera is going to literally look around in all possible directions and render that into a, into a cube map that we can then use on a shiny surface. So first thing I'm going to do is, because this scene's pretty complex, I'm going to set the rendering update frequency to static, which basically means it will not draw unless I tell it to, uh, to get the frame rate to be interactive. I'm going to go ahead and take this thing and I'm going to move it towards the center of my scene. Maybe, maybe I'll move it so it's sitting right on top of that, uh, that little piece of couch. That's good. So now that I have it where I want it, I'm going to go ahead and add uh, what will be my reflective surface near it. It's a little bigger. So. Then what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to take the cube map renderer and I'm going to att attach it to the sphere. So now wherever the sphere moves, the cube map will go with it because it's embedded inside of it now. So now that that's been set up, what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to select the cube map renderer and I'm going to have it render just one more copy of the scene and then I'm going to go ahead and select the sphere and I'm going to turn on environment mapping for the sphere. Now when I select my cube map, I have a new option called dynamic cube maps, which allows me to select the cube renderer. And as you can see, if I zoom in and move around the sphere, it is actually reflecting the three-dimensional scene that I have dynamically around it, which is very, very cool. So that's an example of live cube map rendering. Now if I go ahead and select the cube map renderer, you can see I have some interesting options here, one of which is I can actually click or tap export cube map and I can actually generate a zip file containing the static rendered six faces of the cube map, which is very useful if I want to translate this or, 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 or export this cube map to another scene. I also can vary the resolution of the cube map so that maybe 256 was too high. I, I, can, I could lower that to or raise it as, as necessary. And lastly, if I turn dynamic back on, you'll notice that as I move the sphere around, it will actually dynamically update the reflections. Now for a less complicated scene, this would actually be very interactive, but because this is a, a rather complex scene, um, it, it's, it's a little slower, and that's typically why I will leave until I'm, until I'm ready uh, or, or, or not before I'm ready, I will set the cube map renderer on, uh, on static.
So that's an example of uh, environment mapping, and uh, I hope you guys um, got everything you needed out of the tutorial. See you guys next time.